Marking our run-ups for the opening spell of cricket on the Sportsmax Zone, 31 matches have now been completed in the Indian Premier League, which continues to see West Indian players grabbing some of the spotlight. The latest West Indian to spark fireworks at the tournament, Sunil Narayan. The 35-year-old struck his maiden T20 100, 109 or 56 deliveries in the Kolkata Knight Riders high-scoring loss to the windy skipper Rovman Powers and Shimron Hetmar's Radiston Royals in a match live on Sportsmax earlier on Tuesday. Narayan, who played on the West Indies T20 World Cup winning squad in 2012, spanked 19 boundaries, 13 fours and 6 sixes at a strike rate of 194.64. His century pushed the Knight Riders to 223 for 6 from their 20 overs. But Josh Butler's unbeaten 107 eclipsed the Trinbagonians' ton, leading Rajasthan to 224 for 8 and victory by two wickets. Narayan's IPL exploits on Tuesday uh, was almost uh, like rubbing salt into the wounds of Maroon fans after making himself unavailable for the upcoming T20 World Cup at home, having announced his retirement from international cricket five months ago. When asked by commentator and two-time T20 World Cup winning teammate Samuel Badri about his participation at the upcoming edition of uh, the World Cup in a post-match interview at Eden Gardens on Sunday. Narayan simply said, I will be watching from home, Badri. Nikhil Uttam Chandani joins us via Zoom to delve into Narayan's comments. Nikhil, always a pleasure talking cricket with you here on the Sportsmax Zone. Uh, we know how West Indian cricket fans are, especially knowing that we are two-time champions of uh, T20 World Cup cricket. And uh, seeing the Ryan exploding in the IPL makes you feel as if um, he should be a part of the current T20 setup. But he isn't, having announced his retirement from international cricket. Your thoughts on the conversations that we are getting from uh, Narayan and Badri posing the, posing the question to him and reports about Rovman Powell trying to uh, lure him back into the international game. Yeah, I think, Lance, everyone, um, any smart person in charge of West Indies cricket will be trying their utmost best to get this guy to play the T20 World Cup. I mean, you look at that performance today, I think to score his first professional 100 at 35 years old just tells you about him, how I think the longevity he's created in this T20 format, then followed up with a great performance with ball in hand. Um, but I think when you look at what he has done, the body of work that he has achieved, I would back him in any conditions anywhere in the world. And that, to have a home World Cup where obviously he knows conditions are extremely well, it would be so fitting to have a stalwart in the final 11. It's been interesting because he hasn't really given us a reason back in November last year when he retired, or even now, he hasn't really given us a reason why he's not playing for the West Indies. But it seems like he's decided and made up his mind that he doesn't want to play. He did say today um, in a similar interview that, you know, you never know what the future holds. But you heard Robin Powell after the game saying they've continuously tried different things, whether it be Puran, Pollard, Bravo, someone to talk to him to try to get him back there. We'll never know. But, I mean, Imad Wasim came out of retirement a couple of weeks ago to play the T20 World Cup. So let's see. Yeah. You know what? Um, can we try to pinpoint some of the issues probably surrounding his uh, international campaign because there is a view that because of uh, him being called with his bowling action um, people feel that he would be much more under the microscope in an ICC format tournament um, as opposed to franchise cricket and that is probably a deterrent there is the other view that in 2021 when he wanted to play under the new captain then Kyron Pollard who is his longtime friend um, he was deemed uh, as failing a fitness test or not fit enough. And the West Indies team um, ignored his desire to play in the 2021 World Cup. And interestingly, it was a similar situation where he had starred the 2021 IPL tournament, which was played late in the year, you might remember, because of the COVID-19. Um, it was paused and then returned. And he, at that point, was uh, shining in the IPL. But the West Indies said he didn't meet their fitness standards. Do you think that could actually be a part of uh, sort of tainting his desire for West Indies cricket? I think on the second point, Lance, I, I believe it's a new administration now. You've got head coach Darren Sami. Uh, he was in Barbados a couple of days ago in a press conference and he mentioned sort of the good relationship he's built with Sinead on the right, having captained him. Uh, he's been in communication with him throughout the CPL, etc. So, 
I would think that Narain has sort of put that past him. And I hear the perspective about the action. But what I think is you've got the IPL, which probably is the second biggest tournament in the world after the ICC major event. So I, I do hear some people saying, you know, maybe there's more scrutiny at an international event. But the IPL, let's be real, the amount of eyes on it around the world um, here on Sports Mass, everyone watches this tournament. So uh, you do need some level of confidence to play. Um, so I think in terms of the action, I'm not sure if that is the reason. But again, this is all just speculation because he's never really came out and said, you know, the reasoning why he's not playing. And I think that's why there probably is a small chance he could um, just come back out of retirement to play for this team one last time. And aren't there international um, elite umpires on the ICC roster as well, on the IPL roster doing games? Yeah, yeah. They've got a couple of elite members um, on that ICC panel. Um, and obviously, they've got international level match referees. Uh, Javagal Srinath, who we saw a couple of days ago, he's on the ICC elite panel as well. So, again, there is that consistency between international cricket and the IPL because it's the best of the best. And they also want the best of the best match officials. Yeah. And Nikhil, I just want to spend some time now talking about how much of a loss will it be to this World Cup team? And yes, the World Cup team has not been named yet. But without a doubt, we can, of course, discuss what a Sunil Narayan brings to a team at such a high level, at the World Cup level. Yeah, I think, Mariah, one of our stronger suits from a West Indies perspective has been the batting. So even though, yes, we're seeing these exploits uh, with the bat in hand, I still think he can be a bit inconsistent at times. He's just in a great purple patch. But for me, when I look at these videos and then I see him a couple overs later bowling, that for me is what I think he would be such a great asset. The ball and the ability sort of to have that tight economy. Today, he bowled the 14th and 17th over. He went for 30 runs in his four over spells. That was seven and a half runs per over. The rest of the bowlers in the game went at 12 runs and over, so almost double. I think having a wicket-taking option, we know Aki was saying is present. Gurukesh Moti, but having someone who bowls the different type of spin, off spin can take the ball away from the left-hander. Just the wicket-taking option, but also a critical bowler who can bowl across phases. I think that's the, where the West Indies can use his skill set the most. Yeah, and so unfortunate, despite that knock today, KKR went on to lose and, you know, everybody felt as if, well, for me personally, when I saw this entry, I was like, okay, it's not a bad total. I think they can go on to win, only to check back the score a bit later and see... They were defeated. Yeah, they should have won, Maria. I mean, our Rajasthan needed 96 off the last six overs. Not many teams would, would be back to get that. But we have to credit Rob Paul with that. Camilo, Rian Parag as well. But Joss Butler, that is a T20 knot of the ages. Not only the 100, but it's the way he was struggling at first. First 30 balls, only 44 runs. The next 30, 67 runs. And it's just the ability sort of to accelerate, even at a time where you're not finding your rhythm had to manage batting with the low order as well. But not many players can have that ability sort of to take the game deep, but score big hundreds. This is now his second hundred in the last three innings. It is just remarkable what he has achieved in white ball cricket. I think he's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, and there was that wretched Mitch Stark over to Nikhil that um, sort of swung things in uh, du double R's favor. Yeah, it's been amazing, Lance. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of attention on Stark because of the price tag. But really and truly, he's only had one or two really good games out of seven now. So there will be some concerns there. I mean, that last over he bowl went for 18. And think about the four wides of the last ball. That's five runs. It's a huge difference in, in a game where you're needing 15 runs and over. So definitely there's some concern. But I think he's quality enough that at some stage he will really put his hand up. I mean, that left arm over angle with the in-swinging Yorkers. We are seeing a bit more swing now in the IPL and especially at Eden Garden. So I think it helps him but they definitely need him to fire soon. Yeah, and you just referenced the innings by Rothman, a cameo not by him, and the fact that he hadn't played uh, so many of the opening games, getting back-to-back -back games now. Good to see the West Indies captain being a part of a, a double R team that, that gets a win here. And not only that, but being a part of the intensity of uh, close, exciting cricket. Yeah, he showed his versatility today. Think about that over against Narain, because before, I think it was dismissed five times, had only struck at 70 against Sunny on the right, but took him down. And I think maybe RR can back him or Hetmeyer a bit more, Lance. I'm not really seeing them sort of believe in them when it comes to batting spin. They're leaving them for the last five. I thought today was a great opportunity to send one of them ahead of someone like Ashwin because that partnership 
could have lost them the game, 21 from 21. Hetmeyer last year averaged 50 in the middle overs. So I'm thinking maybe they can get one of them up the order. Robman Powell bats at five for the West Indies. So who's to say he can't do it in the IPL, given what we've seen uh, in these last couple of matches? Yeah, I'm just going to go back quickly to Sunil Ryan and the discussion that triggered this uh, this talk with you, Nikhil, because um, Sunil Ryan, even though we know of his quality and, and his match-winning abilities, which was on full display today. Uh, the West Indies did win the T20 World Cup in 2016 without him. He was a part of the 2012 setup, but they won the 2016 without him. So um, do you think there could be uh, much ado about nothing here in, in this, um, this, this newfound um, narrative about Narayan and his value to this T20 setup? I think regardless, um, the West Indies lads are prepared to go into it. I mean, look at the last 12 months. There was no Sydney on the right, and they have won series. So I think they will believe that they're favorites with or without him. But it's hard for fans around the region and around the world to see someone like this performing so well and not think about the prospect of having him in the team. The biggest thing he adds is just the bowling. I think that's probably the, the area where the West Indies sort of miss the most. When it comes to power, I don't see many teams able to match them. But the bowling aspect of things, the ability even in these high scoring matches, small boundaries, his control of the economy, his control of, you know, his personal skills as well. He really is unmatched when it comes to T20 bowling. And I think that is a suit that they could really uh, would love to have. But then again, I think Sam and his team are prepared to go into it without him because that was never really a, a prospect. And I think they'll believe their favorites. Yeah, and one of the things you can always talk about when you think about Sunil Narayan is experience. Because when you look at the setup that the West Indies currently has, and, you know, we are, of course, choosing our own T20 World Cup team until Darren Sammy decides to announce, right? But with the players at uh, the West Indies selectors' disposal, I feel as if you can always do with some experience. You can always do with that experience that Sunil Narayan brings because he has played at, of course, the highest level and has done really, really well. Yeah, that experience he has is invaluable. I think T20 cricket is evolving and to have someone in the thick of things, the amount of franchise cricket he plays, he sort of understands the change in, in sort of conditions, uh, boundary dimensions, and not to mention it's a home World Cup. But if we isolate the T20 World Cup in its in specific, specifically, two T20 World Cups for Sydney on the right in 2012, 2014, he's got 15 wickets at an average of 15. So even though he missed that 2016 World Cup, he was devastating for batters in the last two he played. I just think with his experience, the calmness that he brings and it's reflecting in his batting, he would just be a great asset to have. But regardless, the West Indies have got to, whether it's with or without him, they've got to be ready when that opening game comes because it's going to be difficult. We're seeing the power of these batters in this IPL. India, New Zealand, South Africa, they're going to come hard at them and the bowling has let them down in the past. So they've got to find ways to pick up wickets at the back end of the innings and be ready with the ball. Yeah, and finally, you touched on something very important there, uh, Nikhil, because um, if you listen to Darren Sammy carefully in, in his recent comments about the West Indies team preparing for the World Cup, he, he does admit that the bowling is the area of concern. So even though we see Narayan doing so well with the bat at the moment, you get the feeling that Sammy would really love to have Narayan in the setup, primarily because of uh, what his team lacks or offers in the bowling department. Definitely. I think you saw how KKR used Narayan today. They saved him for Hetmeyer and Robin Powell because he's been so good against so many of those big hitters around the world. What it allows Captain Robin Powell to do is have an option against Klassen or against Josh Butler, who he's had the better of in the past. And I think that is something the West Indies probably miss now, having a genuine wicket taker who's one of the best in the world. Aki Hossein is right up there, but in the power play. So having that other spin option again, spinning the ball the other way, I think will be critical. But again, they've got to figure out uh, and use the options that they have and find ways to pick up wickets. We're not seeing Shepard Russell bowl that much at this IPL, uh, which is slightly concerning for me. But I hope when the World Cup comes around, they'll be at their best. All right, Nikhil, always a pleasure talk talking cricket with you on the Sports Max Zone. Uh, we continue to monitor the IPL. It is sensational, we must say that. And I know, I know that you're enjoying it just as much as we are. Thanks, man. And we'll talk again soon. Definitely. Thanks a lot, Lance. Yeah, back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.